Good morning folks, how are you? I hope you're all well this morning. Right, uh, this is going to be, I would like to say, a quick video or a short, a long video. I really don't know, we'll see how much it pans out. Now, last few videos I've been doing, which I've been quite enjoying, getting a bit back into the flow of things and stuff like that, of like, updates and stuff. Now, what I have been doing, the guys that have been following me, is, is uh, just dropping a few little tips and hints and I do in my everyday modelling we say career um that uh i do that helps me out in in a fine ways of perhaps cutting cost or um that helped me out in the hobby uh, this day and age everybody's uh, feels a pinch of the money and all that type of thing so we're constantly looking for things around the house or from each other that may save us a few um, dollars, pounds, pennies or whatever here and there. So I for one are feeling the pinch right now. I'm sure I'm not alone and I'm probably sure I'm not the one that's feeling it the worst. Uh, so I like to find the odd few things that can help out and, and, and help me sort of do things a lot better and a lot easier even when i wasn't feeling the pinch shall we say and i was getting kits every week and whatever else you still like to find the odd thing or two that helps you out so i thought instead of doing in each update a the odd tip or two here and there i thought i'll just do the odd couple of videos that will either be completely useless to people um especially to more experienced modelers um i.e age wise or um, that do it every day of their lives so they know exactly what they're doing or they do it for a job or whatever else um, and you know this is just basically a video of how I found things and how I do things no way is it the right way by far from the from the imagination is it the right way um, but it's things that I found myself that help out so you know uh, and no way is it the wrong way neither but it's just things I've found out. So I'd like to pass on to you guys that uh, will help or you know these things already. So you guys that know of these things already, I do apologise. Um, but this is more so of get, perhaps trying to help guys out that are just starting out or, uh, you know, because it, 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 at the end of the day, you walk around a shop and, and you look at the um, kits and that, especially in a, a proper model shop like e-models or wherever, and you think, bloody hell, this is going to be quite an expensive hobby, especially if you want to do the airbrushing and you're starting from scratch and everything else. Um, you know, so it can be a bit daunting. So let's start. Right, one of the most, the biggest tools that if somebody was turning around to me and say, right, Steve, uh, Motti, you tell me what the best tool you have ever bought or invested in that is one thing that you will recommend to people to buy. So I would have to say the first two things that are extremely cheap in this day and age, and the first two things or so that that will that I will recommend to buy are these: the Mark One or Mark Two, whatever you want to say, toothpick, and cotton bud. That's what we call them over here in England. So I apologise if they're a different name or whatever else, but they, I'm just going by the names around here in England or Britain that I know and by. Okay, so let's start with the, the, the cocktail stick. The amount of things you can do with the cocktail stick is untrue. You can apply super glue to it by adding it to the end and then putting it on the piece of model that you need. Uh, putty, um, adding it onto into the gap. Uh, you've just sanded a piece of plastic with your plastic and you can't get um, you know that uh, a bit of dust out or something so you can use that uh, a, a model uh, aircraft canopy uh, the paint seeps onto the canopy a little bit just lick the end wet the end you can slowly scratch it off um, you name it uh, there's plenty of things uh, get a bit of um, tape or blue tack on the end attach it to it and then you can sort of uh, add a part to it while you're spraying or painting it so you haven't got to handle it and you haven't got to get your hands into it so you can paint it you know it, it's got 
every every way, every different type of uses you can think of. That is probably one of the major tools that you could that you could possibly buy or use in modelling. Now, it costs what? Uh, shall we say for a ton of these from uh, so from local Asda store? There's 300 cocktail sticks, and I think it was for 50 to 60p to a pound or something like that. Again, I'm doing everything in British money and sterling. I apologise, guys, for everybody that's over the pond that's probably watching this or not watching this, whatever. Um, but yeah, so you know, in 300, you're probably gonna. It depends how much models and kits you do. I probably will not use uh, 300 in six months. So two pounds for a year for helping out is brilliant. Plus also on the odd run, you can when you're bored and you're waiting for that piece of thing to dry, you can pick your nails with it. You can scratch your nose. You can uh, pick your nose. You know, you name it. It's got every single use that you can find. Okay, so that's that. The cotton swab, uh, plenty of things again, you could uh, use it to, um, you've sanded again, just clean the bits off, uh, brilliant for, for deckling, um, you apply the decal to your um, model and you apply your set and sole solutions or you, you've got water still on it so you can just roll it over like that or you can just dry the bit up around the decal, um, you could uh, clean the parts up like I say, um, when you're applying uh, filler, to a part, you can lick moisten the end, put the filler on, and then you can slowly go over the gap, um, and it'll it'll apply it a lot better. Again, these things are untrue. Um, when you clean out your airbrush, uh, you can use it to uh, get down to to the parts that you can't usually reach, or into the tube and the main shaft of the airbrush, and clean it out once you've removed the needle. Um, put the needle on something straight, and you can clean it nice and nice and carefully. The fluid on uh, your cleaning fluid, the amount of things that this has got is untrue. Now, again, for about two pounds, possibly even cheaper than that, you can buy a big well, Poundland. If you go to a Poundland in Britain, um, you can get a big, massive circular box for, with about 500 in for a pound. <laughs> you know, it's absolutely golden, it really is. So, there's the second tool I would use. Um, Next, right, bees are on airbrushes. Um, one of the things I have found that are fantastic for airbrushing are these. These are dental brushes um, that you basically, I've got quite a few of them, as you can see, I've been using them for a very long time. These are the things that you stick in between your teeth after some food and, you know, or when you're brushing your teeth and the gaps of your teeth to clean uh, your um, bits of food out or your teeth, basically. You bend, you shape, and they're about, well, I don't know, they're about a pound, I'd say, for, well, there's, there's what, six in a the box there, and you can reuse them. So I use these for cleaning my airbrush. Brilliant. You can get them, again, into the bits, into the end of the shaft, or, uh, you know, where the needle goes, you can clean them out. They're absolutely brilliant, and they're cheap, and they're reusable. So you don't have to keep, like, necessarily invest in these type of things for your airbrush. You can use these, which are ex excellent things to use. But again, very, very good to, to help out with the airbrush cleaning. Uh, second thing, a few, the next thing I would definitely use are elastic bands. Again, always make sure you've got a good stash of elastic bands because you can tie um, your parts up that you need to stick together. They're very good for sticking around um, aircraft fuselages, nice and tight so you can get the, the glue seeping out so you can clean the seams up. Again, um, the amount of times I've used these are fun. really are great things to, to have, so elastic bands. Uh, let's go on to the next thing, what shall we find? Next thing, basic toothbrush, cheap, 50p one not expensive at all again you're sanding you want to get rid of the bits of dust from around the thing you just can't get into the, the crannies where they are good bit of toothbrush nice and soft i mean i usually use if it's you know if it's delicate i use a, a paintbrush like so and get rid so it's not so harsh on the part but uh, a toothbrush is good for that they're also good for uh, doing the uh, um um what's it called the hairspray uh, chipping technique 
again the amount of uses that this has are you know untrue sanders these are prof professional modeling sanders well i'll say professional these are basically used bought specifically for modeling uh, the ump ones they're excellent i would recommend these to anybody i really would um paul and lee i send you these you know a, a great price you can't knock them at all they're very up they really are great now if you were just starting to hobby and you couldn't really afford that type of thing straight away and you've got a missus or your mum or whatever or even yourself possibly even better ladies or men's sanders for your nails just as good um you know they have different sort of uh, this one's a fine one i've labeled it at the end and um, you can get in different grades um, you can also get the buffers which um, you know we'll have to use, um, use the, to get rid of the, the nub on the end of the plastic part or sanding whichever the rough side or whatever you want to do you can uh, calm it down and uh, again smooth it and then of course you polish it side it comes out just as good because these are the ones i used to use before i uh, invested in some really good um ump ones so you've also got those um paint palettes how many guys nowadays uh, try and invest in these type of things which are brilliant they really are um, great to have great to use um, but you know they are something that can come a bit lucky you can tell I've been a bit lazy so I've started not to uh, wash it down again um, classic example the one I go to at the minute which is just basically this one it's an absolute mess and that is probably net. I'm probably going to have to invest in another one. Okay, this is a, a MIG or AK one, uh, I think. It doesn't label, it hasn't got a label on. But they're about, for an AK or MIG one, they're about three or four pounds English money, which again won't break your bank, but for what it is, this is from uh, the Works, which is a, a sort of a, a bookshop, a cheap bookshop around Britain. Does like craft things as well. Uh, this was about a pound. So again, it's not breaking the bank. But, you know, not everybody wants to do these. So, quite simply, go into your downstairs fridge and or your recycling bin. Um, and there you go. Free paint. Well, it's not free because obviously you have to invest in your, your butter or whatever else. Um, but again, you're throwing it out. Perfect. Um, you know, I've used it here. You can use them or again the beauty is you don't necessarily have to clean it you can just throw them away um, you can use all types of things uh, bits of old uh, uh, the, i think they've added asparagus in it uh, which is veg around by us or, you know uh, you can use that just chuck it again afterwards again the top of a um, earbud cotton bud uh, lid perfect you know just you, as you paint and then chuck it once you don't need them anymore so they're absolutely perfect to use that's another good that's one of the best tips i've found i use for these type of paint trays um again going on paint trays another good one is if you again for about a pound from poundland or wherever else in britain uh, to invest in a good paint thing uh, again you can reuse it because you can wash it if you want to ice cube tray brilliant uh, put your paints in so you're keeping it separate you can even add like your bits of uh, tips or your white spirits or your airbrush cleaners or soap and water whatever so you keep uh, keeping them separate you can reverse it and put them on that side but again perfect for you know anything really you paint in fact you could even if you wanted to something a little bit different and um, you've got your model parts that you're just making the stick them in there you go you've got your separate little bits you can perhaps uh, add numbers on here so you know exactly which um, bits of your wheels um, that you need to add for your, for your vehicle or your wings or your you know so it's got again an ever ending way of uh, using for your painting what shall we go on to now uh, one th question i do get asked sometimes not a lot but a lot of the time is how do i do camouflage netting or use for camouflage netting uh well there's loads of different ways there's your um photo etch stuff you can use which is brilliant uh there's wiring there's 
whole way range of things you can do. The thing I use a lot of the time is um, your good old simple bandaging. Now this is perhaps uh, the wrong one I've picked up actually at this minute in time out of my box, but it's you know it's not as holy, it's not as good. This one isn't, but again it is uh, stuff I have used before. Uh, you can even add it over to to add sort of um, onto like your diorama, so it looks like rough sort of grass and paint it. Um, it, it does have quite a lot of usages um, to do. So if you just hang on one tip, boys, I will go and get the stuff I'm going to use next. Right guys, yeah, sorry I'm back. Right, yeah, so we were using that as uh, camouflage netting uh, or whatever you use. Now that's not particularly great, but the stuff I do, you can use, is this some stuff I did oh, about a year or so ago. It's actually a dishcloth that you use for doing your dishes or wiping the surfaces and that. Um, as you can see, you can colour it sandy colour, which is what I've done. You can even add to make that S, what is it, the Essian netting or whatever it is. Um, so if you pull it widely enough, you could uh, even add, if you've got the patience, little bits of extra stuff you can add through the, the netting and stuff. So the dishcloth is really good to use. Plus, again, it's about a pound, 50 pence to a pound from a Tesco store or re retail store, whichever one you use. Uh, and the massive, so you, you know, I mean, I've got several downstairs, and they, I haven't even touched the second one for all year. I mean, you know, brilliant. You can colour them as well to the colours that you want. Um, so again, that's uh, another good one I use. Um, going back to um, your mixing of paints and stuff like that. Um, another good one for, for using for, for your paints are um, for mixing paints are your good old Tamiya jars. Um, don't get rid of your old paints, stick them through a wash, uh, that's what I did, I boiled some kettle water, put some soapy water in, left it in there to soak for about half a day, and look at that, perfect, so you can add um, your sort of mixed paints that you've added for your airbrushes and label them up on the top or the sides, um, again, um, the old sort of uh, camera film cases, these are brilliant because you can add your paint in, um, your thinners and whatever else you want to do, stick the top on, give it a good shake and mix and it's done, you can either wash them out and reuse them or you can just chuck them in the bin it's just as quite as simple as that uh, shot glasses, uh, the plastic ones, these are the ones from Asda, I use them from Asda I think they're about 50 pence to, to a pound again for uh, 40 of them but again you can reuse them, you can wash them and reuse them or simply just chuck them in the bin after you've used them for your mixing and painting that. Um, and again, good old top from a milk bottle or your milk container or whatever or jar in the fridge. Uh, you can uh, add your paint into there and use that or you could um, stick your super glue on the side and use your cocktail stick to add it. Um, you could even stick a figure onto it um, and uh, you know, use it as a base for your figure so you don't have to handle it. Um, so again, that's one good thing about your cocktail sticks you can use. Here's a figure that I've done. I've plonked it up his bottom, but you can't see it, which is good. You can hold for your cocktail stick and, and paint, which is a good thing you can do. So that's one good thing for a cocktail stick you can use again. Sorry for going back to that one. But that's your mixing jars. Uh, yeah, um, right, you want to um, add some realistic sort of weathering to your models, like leaves and stuff like that, um, When especially if you're um, doing like dioramas and stuff. Uh, so, you know, the, the, there are different things out there, like these leaf punches that you can use nowadays, which are brilliant, not taking anything away from them. But again, remember, I'm just looking for simple things that, that can help out a lot quicker and a lot cheaper, perhaps. There is your parsley um, from any supermarket again or out at your mum or dad's cupboard or even your own if you're a chef and you like your cooking, all those mixed herbs. Plus also again it will uh, make your model smell quite different shall we say or nice, it depends. But again um, obviously you can sprinkle it on and then if there's any parts that look a bit too big you can just go through with your tweezers and pick them out. But again um, they are, I've used them for a 
years for um, over your even over your uh, camouflage netting. You know, you use your dishcloth, stick a bit of white glue on, sprinkle it, and then you've got your bits of stuff for your you know your kits. But again, um, leaves and stuff like that, perfect. Even better, dried leaves. Um, if you just watch now, look, just crumble them simply like that in a plastic bag, and then again. There you go, you've got your leaves for your diorama piece, you can break them up and make them even smaller to scale, whatever you want to do. But again, what's better to use for leaves than real leaves? Um, laser proof uh, obs observation glasses, uh, or you know, your, your, your tank commanders. Uh, a classic example, here's the Bradley I'm doing at the minute. Where, well, this is the driver's hatch there, but you have the glass that goes in there, and it's now in, in modern vehicles it's um, anti laser reflective, which is um, usually a, a, a silvery white uh, red color. I mean, it can come in different colors, but um, a lot of modern um, American vehicles uh, is red, especially Abrams and the Bradley. Um, so they're, they're basically designed to, if anybody's pointing lasers um, at the things, it doesn't. It, you know it sticks them back at them so it doesn't affect the driver or the gunner or loader or commander whichever so what good tips are to use are this is what i use this is um, basically a pack of uh, 12 pieces of um, card um, from uh, a supermarket again 50 pence so you know look at that that's the one i've done with the abrams um, so it says painting it cut to size it's perfect or there's these things you stick on top of parcels or your, your birthday presents again take the staple out of the back and you've got a whole use of that you can use obviously get the right colour that you want to do going back onto foliage and, and um, proper um, sort of uh, diorama stuff you can use what's better than tree sticks than sticks themselves out the garden perfect for that bit of diorama piece stones actual real stones instead of using them out of putty or um, uh, uh, the um, plastic you know the uh, clay and stuff like that you want to use but perfect you know there's that one um, one of the biggest things I, I, I have found is I don't know if you listen to your MIG paints that come with I don't know if you can there you go the little metal balls inside now you can actually buy them uh, the steel uh, shakers I think they're about 4 99 for a pack of them I don't know how many there is in there I think there's about 100 something like that so it is good um, but what I use uh, what I use now instead are these which are basically nuts screw tops but they have to be marine grade so basically if they're stuck in water they don't rust because obviously if you put them in your paint and they rust it, it's going to you know ruin your paint jars basically but um i got 500 for two pounds off ebay uh, again i've had them now for about two years two and a half years and i've still got a good selection of them still available so you know again good cost saver for mixing your paint i also stick them in these uh, weathering products as well so it helps uh, shake and get the bits off from the bottom. I mean, with them being in animals as well, and especially over time, they do start to, uh, you'll start seeing they do start sticking and drying up at the bottom. So they're, they're good to stick into your, your uh, uh, paints and your weathering products. It does help a lot, they do. Um, again, uh, you finish your, your, your modeling, your, your mixing your paints and um, your varnishes and stuff like that, and you have loads left over, you don't, don't, particularly want to stick it back into the jar because of your, your paint because obviously it could wreck your, the rest of your paint you use um, or your, your gloss you don't want to stick it back into your gloss into your tub or whatever because it might ruin it so there's all different containers you use again one thing I use is um, if somebody's on a bit of medication in the house um, medication medical things stick them through boiling hot kettle water so they in a bowl and perhaps bleach or something or uh, again nothing better than just a bit of uh, washing up liquid with uh, some vinegar in 
in and it gets rid of everything perfect so you can add stuff like that in plus also especially if they are um, uh, using like enamels and stuff and you've got kids in the house it's quite solid so they can't get into them so it's perfect to use so there's those um, um, last but not least perhaps um, uh, we'll come up to the end now guys so I apologise if I'm boring you uh, your tapes Tamiya tapes are fantastic to use which we all know but if you're running out and you can't really afford your next little bit which again Tamiya tape's not going to break the bank but again you know stuff I use is uh, washi tape um, this is from it's made in Japan it's the same sort of material um, it's actually Kamoi paper which is uh, uh, it's spelled K-A-M OI and then paper, which is basically washi adhesive tape. Um, there was a big thing a year or so ago of um, what's, what can you use for the equivalent of masking tape, your tanning your stuff. I know Phil Flory did, uh, from Flory Models, did a, a review of it and they are saying it's good stuff. It can be used on cockpits, you know, it's not too sticky and all that type of thing. Um, so and, and I use it sometimes and it's perfect, it's not done me any harm so again that's a good little um, thing to use instead of the uh, that. Um, another good thing that I invest in as much as I can is sticky labels these are a godsend especially if you go through like I do I will, there's nothing better in research than a good old book um, now Simon Kemp if you're watching will be laughing yourself up because with me being from Stoke-on-Trent um, we say book, look and kook round here or kooky or bookies or stuff like that so of course there you go Sam I've given you a full load of shall we say sorry for the language of this early in the morning but piss taking um, but look perfect you can um, stick your labels on with uh, some pictures that you you know you can just basically save your time straight to the page that you want with the picture that you wanted um, you can also write on them, your little notes if you want to. Um, I always, um, on the instructions, see if I can find them somewhere. No, I can't find them, which is typical. But again, here's the men Bradley ones at the minute. I've got one there, which I write on. Um, and of course, I always, always, before I start a kit, go through and write myself little notes, which I do, which I put there in pencil in here. Um, and one good tip I always do is, is after I finish the kit and it's all done, it's lovely on your shelf, I save the instruction manuals because the amount of fellow modellers that buy cheap kits or second hand kits and they don't come with the the um, instructions, you can always help out and say, yeah lads I've got one of them, you know, I can photocopy it you or I can send it you, you know, and it's a godsend and also you can always loop back on them if you buy the kit again and you've enjoyed it that much or you, you know, and you can use them and you can look at it's just great to do that's what I always do I always I've got a little fold, uh, uh, folder thing that I use and I've got all my old instructions in there so if you guys ever lose any or buy a kit with anything in give us a shout I might have them now then Cy Kemp has done a brilliant video recently on his new um, spray booth it's absolutely brilliant, it really is. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Sime. Sime is one of the most incredibly talented guys I've ever met for uh, modelling and also building, because he's an ex-builder, so he, you know he's got the skills and he's also got the patience and that to do that. I, on the other hand, haven't. I haven't got the money to buy wood and all that type of thing at the minute. I just haven't got it, so you know I have to make do. Now, the best thing I use for a spray booth, and it works every time, and it's perfect, you can take it down, you can uh, reuse it, buy some more for about a pound, um, and whatever else, are these. Your ring bind folders. Now, you might be looking at it and thinking, how the hell is that going to turn into a spray booth? Well, luckily here... Um, but just underneath the, this is where I used to do my spraying on my actual workbench. So I, what I'd do is I'd get a piece of um, newspaper, I'd stick it down, I'd put my A4 pieces of white paper on so I could test the paint and all that. And then, because I'm graced with just there, literally there, is my main window to the bedroom that I'm in. So it's got a big window that I can open, it's also got a little window, so I've got the ventilation there, so technically I don't need a fan and all that type of thing, or filter, so it just goes straight out through the window. 
but now I've just moved it to here underneath the camera and it's perfect so I've now got my workbench I can spray let it dry work and whatever else so it's perfect but I've still got it set up with one of these now what I do is is I sellotape the area there and also on the neck of it there so it can't come through and simply the way you do it is you remember you've got your paper down or whatever else it's just quite simply there you go and then spray away perfect the air's good the, 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 the fumes and everything is going out through the window it's perfect it's just here and you can make it also um, a lot of the problems nowadays with these type of um, things are I was watching a, a video of a chap in Australia or that was um, having to keep making a bigger one that he'd ordered because obviously the kits that you buy are bigger and whatever else but the beauty of this is it's quite simply if it's not um, big enough just simply move it out wider and just add a second one in or a third one which is what I've got here and job done perfect for two pounds there is my spray booth and um, that is probably my most favorite tip of all time <laughs> it's brilliant um, one final tip and going on to your airbrush stuff is uh, cleaners um, now you've got your uh, airbrush thinners you've got your um, your airbrush cleaners and they're all great they're all quite expensive. I mean this was 8 99 now okay it was a rip off from the shop I used to go to um, but you've also got the airbrush cleaner too which is exactly the same <laughs> which is that one um, uh, so you know, you've got all these different ones on the market which are fantastic now what I do is usually is I, have, I get a, a spare tub like this and easy peasy I empty half of it into one of those perhaps and fill it up with water and then I fill the rest of that up with water and there you go for, for one airbrush cleaner you've got two and it's dead cheeky it works a treat it works just as good as the full-on stuff and people that are out there say no it doesn't well I'm sorry if it hasn't worked for you then I can't comment on that I can only comment on what's happened for me and it's worked a treat for me so there you go time uh, time saving money saving and you've got two for the price of one also another good thing I find for air brush cleaning is your window lean and um, you're spraying on window cleaner Add a bit of that to, into about three quarters or even better, about half a bottle into that. Fill the rest up with water and you've got your own airbrush cleaner. Um, cleaning paints, your paint brushes and stuff like that is I just use that with a bit of water and some soap in there. Now the thing I do use at the bottom, which is just as good, is, I'm hoping it's going to come out, is one of these. Perfect. I dump it in the bottom. It's basically a tea strainer here in England. Dump it in the bottom of your glass or jar. Here's one from the tips. I keep in there. Look, I don't know if you can see that. Um, dump it in the bottom, and then as you're cleaning your brush, all the pigments from the paint and everything settle underneath there and to the bottom. So as you're washing your brush in just a normal cup without that in, you keep getting all the bits of old pigments in on your brush. That actually saves it, and they drop to the bottom. And then obviously over time. Once it's all dirty and, and minging, it needs cleaning, just take it out your cup or whatever you're using. Wash it, job's done, job's a good one, I'll put it back in, and there you go. Right guys, um, now I've bored you half to death, it's more than half an hour of Motti's useless, crappy, rubbish tips that he uses for himself. <laughs> which were to treat for me, so I can't say anything else. I'm off, so I'll leave you all alone. I um, hope some of these have helped guys um, I am going to find a few more and there are a few more that I know but these are just some simple ones for the guys that are just starting out or perhaps guys that need some help with uh, saving a bit of money here and there whatever else anyway guys um, hope you're all well hope you all stay safe and may the force be with you <laughs>